Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It helps to turn the microphone on. I thought I did, but there I am groping around in the darkness and not sure what I'm doing. So, as I was telling the kids, I grew up in Africa and I got used to total, total darkness. The village I grew up in did not have electricity. And I remember as a kid being very afraid of that darkness, not being able to see my hand in front of my face, like right there. You know, I could touch my nose, but I couldn't see my hand. And I remember imagining what might be lurking around in the darkness. Now, as I mentioned to the kids, my mom and dad had given me a flashlight to keep beside my bed. And that was fine as long as I could remember the exact spatial distance it was away from me. But like I said, groping around in the darkness, sometimes I would knock the table and the flashlight would fall off and it would roll under the bed and then I was in deep trouble. I wish I could say that that was just only a childhood fear. But as I travel now for my work with Lutheran Bible translators, I still find myself in very dark, pitch black situations. A couple of years ago, not long before the pandemic, I was in a very remote part of Sierra Leone. I was in a mud and stick house and I was getting ready for bed. I had my flashlight turned on and as I got into bed, I turned the flashlight off. And almost immediately... It sounded like my room was coming alive. And I just laid there trying to will myself to sleep. But the fear got the better of me. And so I turned my flashlight back on only to see that the entire ceiling was covered with cockroaches. Like like really big cockroaches. And about 10 or 15 of them were flying around, bouncing off the walls. That's like the first time I realized that cockroaches fly. But an amazing thing happened. Almost as soon as I turned that flashlight on, the cockroaches just seemed to disappear. How many of you know what it's truly like to be in darkness? To be immobilized by a loss of orientation, to question what your very next step should be. How many of you know what it's like to truly be afraid? As a follower of Jesus since a very young age, I have felt those feelings and sometimes pretty intensely, but never to the point of despair and hopelessness. I have always had the true light of God's Word available to me to turn to in those situations. And when I have done that, I have found healing for my pain, comfort in deep grief, and light for my path. Light coming into darkness is a powerful image of God's intervention into human history. The prophet Isaiah, pointing hundreds of years into the future to the coming Christ, says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them a light has shone. Dwelling in deep darkness is at a whole different level than being in a pitch black room armed with a flashlight. I remember back to 2004, my colleagues Nathan and Sarah Esela were in their early years of living in northern Ghana in a small village there, and they were struggling with sickness and basically just struggling to make life work. During one bout of malaria, they were lying on the cement, the coolness of the cement floor in their living room trying to break the fever that they had, looking up at the fan, 
sort of in delirious, delirious, okay, it was looked better in writing, deliriously watching it as, it as it spun around ineffectively. And one of them had the idea to crawl over to their bookshelf and grab a Bible. And as they turned to the to Psalms, that book where God gives you the words that don't come to you, God's Word came to them. God's Word came to them in their struggle. Words like, How long, O Lord? How long? And why do you hide yourselves in time of trouble? And they also read God's words of affirmation. Still, I will trust in you. You hear the desire of the afflicted. And as they read those words of anxiety and comfort and peace, it dawned on them that there were people all around them, the Comba people, who did not have access to the same words of God that they did. Because the Comba people did not have God's Word in their own language. That they could pull off the bookshelf and read in times of sickness and distress. Ten years later, through the work of God and many others, the Comba people launched the New Testament in their language in 2014. There was only one book. Only one book in their language, the New Testament. But it was their book. And hundreds and thousands of people came to celebrate it. Pastor Braun said, mentioned this this morning, that 500 years ago, our forefather and brother in the faith, Martin Luther, experienced the same thing in his own German language. And he translated God's Word. He translated the New Testament into the German language so that the German people could hear God speak in their own language without barrier. Luther's translation spawned a flurry of translation activities in other European languages. And people began to wrestle with God's Word in their own language. And they experienced Jesus as He is revealed in Scripture. And the peace that comes from knowing the hope that we have in Christ. While translating, Luther wrote to a good friend of his, Thomas Lang, and he wrote these words. He says, I wish that this book alone in all languages would live in the hands, in the eyes, in the ears, and in the hearts of all people. And yet, still 500 years later, millions of people still don't have the Word of God in their own language. Without access to God's Word, people remain in the dark, experiencing feelings of confusion, hopelessness, and frustration. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. Just last year, my wife Valerie and our youngest daughter were able to return to the Comba community soon after the pandemic. And we were worshiping one Sunday. And while we were worshiping there that Sunday, I was struck as I looked around at all the well-used and worn-out New Testaments. There's still only one book but it's theirs. And they want to share the good news. And soon, they will have the full Bible in their language. They'll hold it in their hands and they'll speak it from their lips and they'll keep it deep in their hearts. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Think of times when the light of the Word of God has pushed back the darkness in your own life. Maybe it pierced through the grief you walked in in losing a parent or a spouse. 
Maybe it was when the relationship that you thought would never end came to a very painful and sudden end. Maybe it was when that thing that you hoped that nobody would ever find out became public and you had no choice but to walk through the consequences of it. Or maybe it was when everything that you thought was true about someone close to you turned out to be a lie. Maybe your job ended, or the industry shifted, or policies changed, and you were left hanging out there seemingly on your own. What would you have done if it had not been for God's Word and this Christian community to turn to in that situation? How would you have made it through? If you've walked through a season in your life like that, then you know from a deep place and you believe from a deep place that everyone deserves the opportunity to experience the hope that's found in the Word of God. Maybe you're walking through that season right now. A very dark, hopeless season. Maybe you are unsure of how things are going to turn out. Well, I want to tell you, and I want you to hear this clearly, that came from our Gospel reading this morning, the Word of God, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And the darkness will not overcome it. Maybe you are fine right now, but there is someone in your life who is struggling. Maybe they're far away from God right now and you see them walking in confusion, hopelessness, and fear. And maybe you're not in a place where they're willing to hear and listen to you. What would you give for someone to come into their lives and to speak light and hope into their lives and to share with them the hope and the light of God's Word. What would you give for someone to point them to Jesus? The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. As we recognize Bible Translation Sunday, may we celebrate that we have such free access to God's Word in our language. We can take it off the bookshelf. We have it on our phones. We have it in audio. We have it in video. You name it. God's Word is available to us. If we're walking through a dark time and we want God to speak to us, it's as simple as pulling it up on our app and letting God's Word speak into our life, into our situation, and bring comfort and peace. And let's also remember those who are still waiting. Those who hunger for something greater than what they're currently experiencing in this world. Those who don't know what they are missing because the things of the Spirit are spiritually discerned. And let's remember in our prayers the many language communities around the world partnering with Lutheran Bible translators to put God's Word into their hands. God's Word is a gift for us to be sure. But it is a gift for everyone. The true light which gives light to everyone has come into the world. His name is Jesus. And He invites you to know Him and to trust Him. And He invites you to share Him with all those around you in your community. And He invites you to share Him with people at the very ends of the world. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding 
will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.